12,000 years later, waiting for a fast idol to come down. And fuck, I was gonna go, but Jesus. Oh man, I guess 3 o'clock is not the time to be, or 2.30 is not the time to be leaving here, I guess, on a Friday. Uh, I get, you know what, fuck it. Twenty twenty riding season's almost up. I can just sense it. I can see it. Look at all the colors. They're supposed to be green. They're turning yellow. That means that things are going bad. Things are getting cold. Get out. That was my one good deed for the day. Motorcycle cop got somebody. <laughs> so big things have happened this year in 2020. I just rolled over 10,000 miles this year. Put that in perspective, last year I only had about, I want to say eight. So I have an extra 2,000 miles for sure more than last year. I'm actually, uh, do the math, I'm at like 10,003. So, I'm actually well on my way to making close to 11,000 miles this year. So, that begs the question now, what do I set my goal for, goal to be next year to match my 10,000? Or do I try to go better? For whatever reason, I feel like, you know, this year I got out about as much as I really wanted to, you know, while still maintaining some semblance of, like, going to the gym and stuff like that, so. So I feel like if I shoot for like 11 or 12,000 miles, I'm just gonna end up like not, I'm gonna be a real fat piece of crap. You know, I was thinking about the fact that like, there's a lot of guys now, major guys on social media, YouTube, especially that are now buying the uh, 131 kits from Harley, whether it's the Bolton kit or a crate motor. Granted, Shade Tree Surgeon was given his, given the Road King for a long-term review that has a 131, his Road King Kong. Uh, but Block had just finished up his 131 and, you know, it's gotten me thinking like, what really is worth the money, you know? Like, what's what's really worth it in terms of like, price point, um, user friendly, uh, rideability, and even like, overall like, wear and tear reliability to your motorcycle. Like, you know, I hate to say it, but I think Harley Davidson did better in terms of making that 131 because even though there's some people that or there's been you know information and details coming out about the 131s and how they got to that displacement and like their question they question the reliability and like heat issues and whatnot and like I so far you know there's been a number of guys that have gotten it and I haven't heard a whole hell of a lot of people complaining about them. Like, oh, there's way more heat. Oh, they're not rideable. Oh, they're, the reliability's poor. I really haven't heard anything about that. And, you know, in my opinion, I think it's worth the money to do the 131 kit or the 131 motor because in retrospect, when you look at what it, go, what it takes to make a solid running 124 or 128 you know it really requires that you know what kind of you know then you know a shop that can do it well and it's not going to bullshit you and just like cheap out on stuff like for me like if i was going to have 
124 build on my road glide, man, I'd have to take it to Moonshine Harley Davidson. Like they've been doing it for so long and they're they got so much information out there about, you know, what exhaust runs well, what's what doesn't, you know, what cams, what else do you need to do, what kind of cam plates, you know, all that stuff. They've done the research. And, you know, they would be the ones that I would trust to build a 124, 128. Hell, they're even doing a 131, like, aftermarket build. But the thing is, is, like, that concerns me most about the 124, 128 builds is that even if you do it right, it seems like there's a lot of people that end up having to replace things, you know, replace a clutch or replace a... Uh, uh, you know, the compensator can't handle it, so we have to put in a new one here. And then, on top of that, like, oh, I just destroyed third gear or something like that, so they have to put in a stronger gearbox and all that, and it's like, all that totals up in a hurry to being a crazy, crazy build. Or crazy bill, I should say, not just the build. It's a crazy build, but it's a crazy build to go along with it. You see, I haven't even done my cam. You know, I haven't done the 475 cam, haven't had it tuned with a power vision or any of that. And, you know, I think my bike runs well. I think it runs decently. I feel like the power is strong and reliable. But I mean, obviously, like, I, I want to go for more, I'll, like, who doesn't want more power? Who doesn't want that face-melting torque, that, that screaming exhaust note at 600 or, you know, 4,000 RPMs and you're already going 120, you're just pinned out, just, ah, you know, who doesn't want that? And that's why I'm like, if I was going to do it, I think I would have to go and do a 131. Like, maybe do a different cam, do an aftermarket cam setup with it. But, you know, realistically, it seems like those 131s for the price, the power that you get, even with their tune... I mean, 120 horsepower is nothing to like, be like, oh, that's not much. You know, 120 horsepower, 131 foot-pounds of torque, like, that's not bad. I think, I, well, there's a number of people that have gotten, well, Jace from the Fast Life Garage, he got 136 and 140-something foot-pounds of torque. Like, that's pretty damn nice numbers. Now he's running an aftermarket pipe and he's also running a Thundermax tuner so he's not going to have an EPA sanctioned tune but on a street legal motor putting out you know we'll say 125 horse and 130 131 foot pounds of torque from Harley that's pretty damn nice and I, I mean it's it's eight, it's 40 more horsepower to the rear wheel than this bike has so like I would be very happy with it plus the fact it comes with a two-year warranty I think it's a two-year unlimited mile warranty like a warranty on that whole all the components and all the powertrain that goes with it like it's a no-brainer to me. Like, I would I would drop the money if I had that kind of money, but at the same time, you also got to ask yourself, like, well, now I need to upgrade my brakes. For sure. Because you're putting out that kind of power, you're going to need to be able to stop, too, and so you'll have to pay a bit more cash for that. But it's better than with that, you know, with the kit, it comes... I think they usually recommend or they do include the stronger clutch plates in the springs. So, I mean, 
you gotta say like it makes sense it makes sense to do it that way and it it seems very cost effective the reliability I think is there and if it's not there well you got a two year warranty on it so if it blows up or does something it just fucking has any major problems at least you got that backing you up so I don't know now granted I've gone back and forth and I think that there are amazing 128 124 builds out there and even bigger you know bigger cubic inch builds that are just as reliable and make just as much power if not more but you know if you're a if you're a novice and you don't really know what components to buy or don't have a shop close by that's ever built and tuned anything like that you are kind of in a you know it could be in for a mess in a world of hurt if you uh if they skim by and they say oh yeah we got it built for you and then six miles from the shop your clutch just grenades itself or your transmission just shreds all the gears you know you have six neutrals like I don't know it's one of those things where it's like I yeah, I feel like I could go either way on it but I think if I was to if I had a limited budget I would definitely probably go with the 131 or 128 I guess it is for this if it was the Bolton kit the 128 stage 4 kit for this bike and run a good 2 into 1 and see what kind of power we make you know anyways guys I think that uh, that's going to be a rather short video it's just like I'm just riffing off the top of my head about like these 131's like they're catching on pretty quick so I mean I don't know if it's just a craze and people are getting really good deals to install them or if they are worth all the hype you're going 65 and an 80 i hate you